Every week on CBSN Denver, we get your coronavirus questions answered during a special segment called Q&A with Dr. Dave. Joining me now is CBS4 medical editor, Dr. Dave Nida. And Dr. Dave, last week the FDA authorized the use of yield saliva test, which offers much faster results. How useful do you think this test could be? Well, uh, right now one of the biggest problems we have is that we don't have enough uh, ability to mass test people. The other problem is the fact that the turnaround time tends to be a little bit slower than we really would like. And so we're hoping that a new test, something called Saliva Direct, will actually be an answer to this uh, particular set of problems. Because when you think about it, we've got schools reopening, universities, colleges reopening, sports wanting to play, so on and so forth. So it would be good to have something that's easy, simple, and quick and accurate. And so right now we're looking at the Saliva Direct test, which was developed by Yale University. And it was kind of interesting how it was tested. It was actually utilized in the NBA bubble uh, down in Orlando, very controlled situation, where what they did was they did the saliva test, which simply is spitting into a cup sort of test, and also did the nasal, the conventional nasal swab testing, which is the standard for accuracy. They did this on people uh, numbering about 500 uh, every day or every other day. And what they found was that the saliva test was just as accurate as well as quicker than the conventional nasal swab. So we're really hoping that this is something that we're gonna be able to utilize in the general population. The test itself is pretty cheap. We're thinking about 10 bucks to have the testing done, which is inexpensive compared to what other tests uh, are running right now. The turnaround time is anywhere from three to about 16 hours, which is pretty good. So you get results uh, fairly rapidly. No special equipment is needed. And actually a lot of labs have the capability in order to run this test. So we're hoping that over the course of the next, let's say three weeks ago, uh, three weeks or so, we are going to wind up seeing this test available. Interesting. I know that rapid testing would be great for students who are waiting for a COVID test result back or employees, and that's great to have another option possibly. Thanks so much. Um, well, as more states begin to relax restrictions, many people are wondering if it's safe to travel. So is flying safer than many have been thinking lately? What are your thoughts on that? Well, we've all been paranoid about uh, the thought of even getting onto an airplane, but it may perhaps be a little bit safer than we thought. And a lot of this information has just come out through uh, the Journal of the American Medical Association, which took a look at uh, a couple things. They took a look at uh, flights where people were known to have uh, COVID and uh, how those people or those flights actually did not wind up uh, causing giant outbreaks. They also took a look at the fact that we've been into this now for uh, a number of months, and there really has not been one particular big outbreak associated with one particular flight. And so you say, well, why is this? Well, we think a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, air filtration on an airplane is really pretty good. It's recirculated uh, in the cabin every two to three minutes through high effect, high, highly efficient filtration, uh, as well as the fact that there are new sanitation uh, and disinfecting procedures that have been put in place uh, by the airlines. And so the other things that play into account here though are a little bit more subtle and things to think about if you are going to be flying. The risk really plummeted quite a bit when everyone wore a mask as well as when middle seats were kept open. So if you are going to fly, you want to make sure that the mask policies are enforced by the airlines, as well as the fact that uh, you are going on an airline that does offer an open middle seat. Uh, additionally, it's really important to remember that uh, you are just talking about the flight experience itself. You have to remember that there is risk involved no matter what, and that is particularly outside of the airplane. There is the boarding, pre-boarding, going through security, the waiting area. 
getting on the plane, getting off the plane, bunching together, so on and so forth. So the flight itself probably uh, a little bit safer than we thought. Uh, it's not risk-free. Nothing is risk-free these days. And uh, I think that we can be a little bit more reassured the next time we have to travel. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say they were pleasantly surprised on flights with the way that they've been doing the social distancing and stuff. So it's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Well, over the weekend, the FDA gave doctors the go-ahead to use blood plasma from COVID-19 survivors as a treatment. Can you tell us more about this treatment? Yeah, it's, it's convalescent plasma uh, antibody treatment, and it's something that's uh, been researched over the past uh, several months. And what it involves is taking plasma filled with antibodies from people who have already had COVID and then giving it to people who are sick with COVID in an attempt to see whether or not people wind up getting better if they're given this load of antibodies uh, in order to uh, fight the infection. And we've heard these stories of people who have gotten these antibody or plasma infusions and they've done very, very well. And I've even had a friend who uh, had COVID was pretty sick and wound up getting a plasma infusion and wound up uh, recovering rather quickly. But here's the deal is we don't know whether it was the plasma infusion itself that did it or whether or not it just happened to be that the patients got better on their own. Now, there was a lot of hoopla yesterday uh, when the emergency use, author, use authorization came out uh, for the use of plasma antibodies. Uh, there were a lot of terms that were thrown out there, including uh, this is a game changer, it is a breakthrough, it cuts death rate by 35%, and also uh, these are just spectacular results that we've seen. A little bit of an exaggeration uh, in terms of using phrases like that. We do think that the treatment is most likely helpful, but it's never really been tested in people in a controlled uh, fashion, meaning all of the testing that's been done so far that was used to justify this decision, were th all of the people were given the plasma. And the thing that varied was the amount of plasma they were given as well as the timing of the plasma that was given. There have been no published studies yet where it looked at people who got plasma or did not get plasma. So we don't know if plasma really does the trick. The good news is that it does appear to be a safe treatment, unlike the hydroxychloroquine uh, deal that happened uh, within the past several months. So I think now more and more plasma is going to be administered, but that also now brings up another issue. Is there going to be enough convalescent plasma to go around to every COVID patient who is hospitalized? And this is a, a very important question because we do know that only about 20% of the antibodies that are donated are really very strong antibodies that do help to possibly fight infection. So we have a lot of people donating and it's great that they do. And I would encourage you to do so if you would have you have had COVID and have the ability to donate plasma, but not all plasma is created equally. And so we're hoping we're not gonna have an issue with shortages and uh, rationing of uh, plasma as a therapy. So we'll see what happens in the months to come. Yeah, certainly something that's very interesting. Well, Dr. Dave, thank you so much, as always, for joining us. We'll see you back here next Monday at 11 a.m. as we answer more coronavirus questions. And to see all of our Q&A with Dr. Dave segments, just visit cbsdenver.com. We'll be right back.